And so this is kind of the background to the story of Noah, that God had come to a place of where uh, he just got completely fed up with everything. So he decided he was going to wipe everything out. And this is where Noah comes in. And of course, we all know, most of us probably know the story of Noah, that God calls him to build an ark, this big boat, and he brings all the animals, he keeps all the animals, and the Lord keeps Noah and his family and all the animals safe during, and the flood comes and rain comes, uh, and then God kind of destroys everything. And then after a number of months, uh, Noah is, is safe, uh, and all the flood waters go down, everything's been destroyed, and uh, Noah and his family are saved. And, and what's interesting about this story that I, I found very interesting is the word, the word, the Hebrew word for Noah is to rest. And God uses lots of people's names to have, uh, they will have meanings. God loves a good pun. And so you realize the story of Noah is all about resting. And that's what it is. And obviously we look at it and it can seem like this big kind of uh, horrible destruction that God brings. But it's actually about resting. And you see the earth needed to rest from man's evil. And so God brought Noah there and, and, he, and he kept him safe. Um, and while he kind of reset everything. And you see that Noah and his family, they had a period of rest in the boat. And you can actually look at them and say they were kind of quarantined or they were self-isolating on the boat during that time. Uh, but God kept them safe. And then at the end of the story, we find uh, at the start of chapter nine, what does God tell Noah and his family? He blesses them and he says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and all the animals on the earth, etc., etc." And And when you see that statement from God, um, it brings you back to the creation story at the start of Genesis. As you see in that at the start of this, um, uh, Genesis, it, God tells Adam and Eve, go forth, be fruitful, multiply. And he says exactly the same thing to Noah. And you see that God is bringing about a reset in what he does with the flood. And that he's resetting all the earth and he's basically starting again with Noah. Having realized that the earth needed to be sorted out. And the, I love the way the message describes it. It says the earth was a sewer. and God had had enough. And so God comes and brings a rest to the earth and a reset with Noah. And, 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 I, and, I, and I don't know what is going on currently with the whole coronavirus. But I really believe that God is allowing it to happen. And I don't know all the reasons why it is, but I wonder whether God is allowing this to happen in order to bring the world to rest, the world and just allowing itself to kind of come to a halt. I mean, just look at, and I'm sure you can look at the world, the way it's been going, it's just kind of going along like 100 miles an hour uh, and so much is happening. And you just see what's the, the effect of this coronavirus. It just brought the world to a halt and to a stand and to the fact that like, I mean, you just think about the airline industry and the way that just the airlines just connect in all the world so so quickly and easily. And actually, you find um, you you can see now the airline industry is basically just ground to a halt. And I was reading an article on the BBC that effectively um, they're, they're losing so much money. And, and what actually might happen is we get to the point the only airlines go in a cargo planes. And you think just just six months ago that would have been kind of impossible to imagine. And and just you wonder whether the Lord's hand is is in all of this. Um, but obviously, and, that's, and obviously with the, on the global scale, we don't know what long-term effect this is going to have. And I think there will be a lot of things we find that will fundamentally change following uh, once the world kind of gets through this. And I'm sure the Lord's hand is, is in all of that. But not just on, on a global scale, on a local scale for us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I certainly know my life gets very busy. I mean, I've got a full-time job. I've got a young family to look after. Um, I'm heavily involved at church. And I've kind of got activities outside of church that I'm quite involved in. And you just find that life is just, just, just full pace all the time. And, and I wonder whether with this, what's going on, us having to self-isolate at home, whether it's just God is allowing us an opportunity just to come and to rest. Mm. And again, looking back at the, the story uh, the creation story we shall find what does god do on the seventh day it says he rested but the word rest that 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 um that is used in genesis is not talking about well god got really tired from creating um from the creation and had to put his feet up like we do at the end of a week he's actually god just stopped creating he ceased and that was his rest he stopped because god doesn't need to kind of chill out like we do 
Um, and I wonder whether for us, this is just a chance for us just to stop, just to stop. And, and, and obviously church right now, we're all just sat in our own, own, um, our own homes. Lauren is literally snuggled up in bed. She's not even had to get dressed um, to, to come and be part of church. And you, and you think there's so many activities we could do and we just can't do. Just life has come to a standstill for a lot of us. And I wonder, wonder whether this is just God's opportunity to allow us just to come and to stop and to rest. And of course, and then this whole idea of rest is, is prevalent throughout the Bible. And, but you find that God's rest and to enter God's rest is not just a, just a way we need to stop everything and kind of live like a monk-like existence. But it's about finding that through the chaoticness and through the troubles of life, it's just to come into his presence and just to sit. And that's what you find Jesus did. And Jesus says this um, quite well-known scripture in, in Matthew chapter 11. He says, all who are weary, come to me and I'll give you rest. And he's not saying, come to me and I'll just make everything go away. But come to me and you'll find that I will give you godly rest. And this is what I'd like us to pray for our little devotional time this morning, is that we would come to a place of, of, the, of where we wouldn't just stop everything and just kind of do nothing, but we would come and just find rest in God's presence and as tim was saying yesterday this is a potential opportunity for us to kind of read our bible more and to spend more time with god i think it's also a time an opportunity for us to just to come and rest and even though i know for a lot of us being stuck at home with our families and with our young kids it just doesn't seem that restful but i think it's, a, it's an opportunity for us just to come into god's presence amen, amen. 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 This is, um, I think we'll have a time. We'll have a time of prayer now. And we'll just just pray that we can just find God's rest in all of this. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing with this virus. Lord, we know that it's it's pretty horrible, and a lot of people are dying, and and just life has been so disrupted. But we thank you that you are in control of this, and we praise you that you are allowing this for your purposes to be worked out. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity for me personally, for us as a church and for our nation, just to come and to stop and to rest. And Lord, but I pray it wouldn't be a time of rest where we just do nothing, but it's a time where we come and just sit in your presence. And Lord, that is real rest, Lord, that, that almost just through the life, through all the storms of life, just coming and sitting with you and just spending time with you and allowing you to come and to minister to us. And so I pray, Lord, in this time that we would not, Lord, um, panic, that we would not get stressed out. But when we're finding that just that just all that's going on is just getting too much, we would just come and just sit with you, Jesus, and just sit and just spend time with you and just, just be in your presence and let you come and to minister to us. And so I pray for us and for me and for our church that we would just come and enter your rest during this time, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. The rest of part of your plans and your purposes for us as as human beings. We just pray that you would you would help us, Lord. For some of us, Lord, the you know this slowdown will have meant much more time. For others, it's actually made us more busy. But, Lord, in it, we just pray that, Lord, as Mark's encouraged us, we would find your your rest, find that that peace of God, Lord, that slowing down, that those things, Lord, that are not essential, Lord, that we've maybe those habits we've built up, those things we do, Lord, would just drop off, Lord, and we would find ourselves refocused on you again, Lord. We pray. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Father God, that each and every one of us can take this time to really look at our lives and reset and start with you at the beginning and filter down from then. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord Jesus, I'm just minded, Lord, of the story of Lord Mary and Martha, Lord Jesus, and uh, Lord, how uh, Mary chose, Lord, the better path, Lord Jesus. She chose the better place, Lord. And um, Lord, whilst Martha was running around doing this and that and making all sorts of preparations, Mary sat at your feet and listened. She rested in the presence of you, Jesus. And 
I pray, Lord, that we would have simply have that same attitude that we would take this time, Lord, out from, um, I guess, the stresses and anxieties of life. It's difficult, Lord, when at the moment with uh, children at home and oh, um, stuff like that. But it's, I pray, Lord, that we would use use this time, Lord, when we're not having to physically meet, Lord, and um, to just rest in your presence, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Mm. Yeah, help us to uh, work this out uh, practically, uh, Lord. Um, perhaps if we're not used to resting and not used to being still, help us to uh, just grow in, in, in our ability to give you space and room uh, in our lives. And even when, if we're busy doing things with children at home, um, I pray help us to find ways in which we can just tune in uh, to what you're showing us, what you're saying, what you do. Um, I, I thank you, Lord. On, um, I mean, it's, it, no one could have foreseen or thought of a time when literally the world stops, the economy stops, uh, transport <laughs> stops. It's just totally unprecedented. Uh, and I pray, Lord, it will be, there will be an element of, uh, of this rest in it. And uh, just this reflection on what's truly of worth and what's truly valuable. Uh, we, we pray, Lord, help us who know and love you uh, just to, to show where our our true rest lies. Amen. 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 <clears throat> just following on from what David prayed, it just reminded me of this verse. Um, in 1 Corinthians 2. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, or entered it. Let me read it from King James. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And Lord, there is just so much that we don't really know. We don't really know what will happen tomorrow, Lord, with this lock lockdown? We don't know what will happen today. Loads and loads of stuff we don't know, Lord. But one thing we do know, Lord Jesus, is that we are safe in you, Lord. Amen. Even if we haven't seen it, Lord, we know, Lord, that you have prepared good things for those that love you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, that you have made a way for us, Lord, that we are safe in you, Lord Jesus. That when you say, cast all your cares on me because I care for you, Lord, that means that you care for us, Lord. We know that, Lord. We can see it. We can see it with the eye of faith, Lord. And Lord, I pray today, Lord, that even in our ignorance, Lord, may we declare what we know, Lord. Lord Jesus, yes. Our rock that we're standing on, Lord, will be declared that people will be able to see that there is a source of strength that comes not from man's understanding, Lord, but from the Lord God Almighty. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Lord, I just agree with Peter's um, prayer now, Lord, and, and with what Marcus shared this morning, because this morning all I had was just like a, like a vision, almost like God showed me a painting of a person that was standing on a rock and the storms just like all around them. But this person was not a total state of rest, just a total state of peace, Lord. Mm. And I thank you, Father. I, I saw myself like that, Lord. That is, that is who I want to be right now, Lord. That is who we can be, Lord, if we choose to enter into that state of rest. If we not choose to kind of be, uh, be um, swarmed up with the storm around us and everything is going on around us, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you are the rock on which we stand, Lord. Thank you, Father, that, Lord, you, you build your church. You keep on building your church continually, Lord. And I thank you, Father, this morning. I just want to thank you, Lord, for, yes, the state of rest, the state of peace that you do give us, Lord, when everything else is in turmoil, Lord. I praise your holy name this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Wow. Amen. It was great to um, have a little time with you all this morning, time with God. That's good. I know um, I know it is difficult, especially when you've got lots of young kids at home to try and find that, that place of rest. But yeah, amen. Through God, we can, we can do that. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. Thank you, Mark. That's all right. Good. Mm. We're home groups tonight. I think, Phil, I think all groups are meeting tonight, aren't they? <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Have a good day, everyone. And you. Bye. 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 I'm still there. Uh, Sally Ann, I, sh- I just saw, just saw you had your hands waved. Um, I assume that you can hear everything then. We can't see you, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. There you are. Cheerio. Cool, see you, Dion. It's good to see you not on your bike. Yeah. <laughs> You're not yeah. working today, Dion? Not today, no. No. So, so, is that, is that, are you now down to three days a week? Is that right? Um, for next week, um, but uh, yeah, today, uh, but I had one job, and it was not an essential job. People want some pictures hanging, and I said to the office, well, in that case, I'm not going to go into London to put up uh, a few pictures for somebody. Yeah, it's, it's, if it's not a water leak or something, um, yeah, more essential. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm off today. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy homeschooling, Dion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't prepare anything. My teacher's going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done your homework? <laughs> no, I'm work. <laughs> uh, no. You know, you need, to, you need to DT this morning. I, I, I feel a DT lesson coming on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's make some yeah. uh, book Get a bit of wood. <laughs> Get a bit of balsa wood. A bit of glue. A bit of a couple of nails, you know. That's yeah, it. There's a castle you need to build. Oh yeah, and we need to build a castle apparently. So that's another Minecraft lesson, man. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, right? All right, guys, bye bye. Yes, I'm good, thank you. Oh. Bye, Sally. Bye. Bye, at Sally. Least you don't have to, at least you don't have to see my bed here, so. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quite a few people in the morning have turned the video off because so, yeah. yeah, it's been a good option. Not cool. Right. See you later. Cool. Bye. Well done. <coughs> See you, Mum. Hello, Hi, John. Hello, John. Right. Oh, hello, John. Morning, John. She's on mute. It's better to have Ruth on mute, to be honest. <laughs> so, if you want people to pray, do they have to put their hand up on the thing to make it work? Well, we, we've kind of been trying that in different ways. I think the best way is just to mute everybody, but allow them to unmute themselves. 